are saying goodbye to fallen Marine Connor Lowry this evening. The plane carrying his body landed this morning at Midway and was honored with the water arch salute. Streams of water from fire trucks creating an arch over the plane. Then people lined the streets with American flags as Lowry's body passed his high school, Brother Rice, on the way to St. John Fisher Church in Beverly. Fox Chicago's Craig Wall is on the south side right now where hundreds paid tribute tonight. Craig? Yeah, that respect continued tonight, Bob. The wake just wrapped up a few minutes ago. It lasted for seven hours. And as you said, hundreds of people have come by here during that time frame to pay their respects to Connor Lowry and his family. And for many of them, their hearts remain heavy tonight. He loves his friends. He loved his family. He loved his country. American flags formed a patriotic perimeter around the church as friends, neighbors, and even complete strangers came by to honor fallen Marine Corporal Connor Lowry. The 24-year-old graduate of Brother Rice joined the Marines in 2008 and was just a few months away from being discharged. Lowry was a gunner in a Humvee, but he was killed March 1st while serving in Afghanistan. Those who knew him say Lowry was a great guy. Inside the church, the visitation line snaked back and forth, and people waited for over an hour to wish the family well. For some who were very close to the family, it was just too emotional of a situation to talk about. Others reflected on the young man who died too young serving his country. It's very tragic. He was a wonderful young man. Uh, he came from a wonderful family there. It's a large, happy family, very supportive of one another. And I've known his grandmother for a long time, and she's wonderful, and this breaks her heart. Well, my heart, of course, is, is, is heavy. Um, I, saw, I saw Connor just before he went to Afghanistan and had talked to him. And, uh, you know, like all kids that age, the, the light finally went on. You know, he, he understand what he wanted and where he wanted to go and, and stuff like that. And then, you know what, he had his, his whole life ahead of him. Corporal Lowry's funeral will be here tomorrow starting at 10 o'clock. His mother, Modi Lavin, will cut the ribbon Sunday to kick off the start of the Southside Irish Parade. And his friends will march alongside the Grand Marshal. Live in the Beverly neighborhood, Craig Wall, Fox Chicago News. Craig, thanks. There were so many mourners at tonight's visitation. Some cars were parked illegally and got tickets. Fox Chicago News has learned Mayor Emanuel was angered when he found out. So anyone who got a ticket while at the visitation will not have to pay it. All of those tickets have been voided. Right now he's getting ready to deploy to Afghanistan for a second tour. With any mother, this is just heartbreaking, even if your son's in the military or not, it's very hurtful to, you know, see this happen to a family. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of hard for all of us because we are one big family. Uh, it, it hits home for a lot of us and it, uh, it helps us realize where we actually came from and how close we really are. I want to say I'm, I'm sorry for the loss. And uh, the Marine family will always be there for you through thick and thin. Governor Rice asked us if we would join with their community in honoring uh, Corporal Lowry. He was so young. What is that? He's very young, and it, I, our students are very touched by that. And because they, again, it's, it's someone who's very young. It's someone who um, is from the area, very well known, very well liked. Does Connor make you guys feel proud? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. because. Two years ago, another uh, person passed, and we know how proud the military service has been in Brother Art, so basically, yes, we have.
tell me a little bit about your brother. Each and every year, as every year go by, I just grow closer and closer with him. He was happy-go-lucky and just everyone loved to be in his presence and he was just great to be around. He was so funny, that's what I loved about him, was his sense of humor and he was just such an amazing, great guy and he was a huge Southside Irish boy, you know, like he is the epitome of the Southside Irish. He was a huge sports fanatic, he played ba basketball, baseball, football, um, loved Michael Jordan, loves Notre Dame, um, and he loves to play the guitar. Tell me a little bit about some of the things that are laid out here. Um, well, I did this last night, late at night, when, um, when my brother Charlie flew in from San Diego. He bought some clothes from Connor's apartment in San Diego. And there's a couple Bears jerseys right here. And then there's some St. John Fisher jerseys here. And the St. John jersey, uh, St. John Fisher jerseys here. St. John Fisher helmet here. St. John Fisher homecoming sign. And then I have his brother Rice football jersey. And then um, this is his boot camp shirt. This is his Jordan shorts and his Jordan shirt. And that's um, his golf battery hoodie. Because he was in golf battery. He served for golf battery. And these were his dress blue pants. And over here, this is dress blues. And then this is his hat. This is his favorite hat ever, his Notre Dame hat. And some shoes and the cross that was on his father's casket. And that's a picture of Connor as a kid. Connor was the most amazing, kind, and caring man that anybody could have met. And it was a pleasure to have him as a brother. I am so honored. He has made me so proud of him my entire life. And I've always aspired to be like him. And I, just, I love him so much. He means the world to me. He's just an all-around great guy that anybody would have been lucky to know. For our other top story, the death of a 24-year-old Marine Corporal, Connor Lowry. He died in Afghanistan yesterday. He grew up in the city, and he had been corresponding with a group of students at a Southside school about his tour of duty. ABC 7's Jason Knowles is live with more on this sad story. Jason? Well, good morning, Ravi. The Chicago Marine had been corresponding with students here at his former elementary school. Of course, he was talking to them and teaching them about what it was like to be at war. I did talk to his family earlier on this morning. They told me he was a charming guy and a true Marine. I just want to let them know how much I love him and how much I just wish this wasn't true and how much I just want to give him one last hug because he gave really good hugs. <laughs> Grace Lavin holds on tightly to her brother Connor's favorite Notre Dame hat. The Marine, 24-year-old Corporal Connor Lowry, died yesterday in Afghanistan. He truly was adored. And this bigger-than-life boy who touched everybody because he was so funny and so good-hearted. As his family awaits for answers, they remember the 2006 graduate of Brother Rice High School as someone who captured a room with his magnetic personality. He was bigger than life. He was the mayor. You know, um, he would be coming home and my sister would look out in the backyard. There'd be 400 people in the backyard four hours before his plane arrived. <laughs> Corporal Lowry, who's described as a South Side Irish guy through and through, joined the Marines a few years ago after high school in 2008. The 6'5 former football player wasn't actually sent to war in Afghanistan until October. That's when his neighbors put up these yellow bows on the block. Lowry was supposed to come home for good, his family says, in just two and a half months. We were all convinced he was going to come home. We really, really were convinced he was going to come home. I've always aspired to be like him. I've always wanted to make him proud, and I really just want to do that from now on. He was just, he was always looking out for me, you know? He was, you know, he was my guardian and my hero. Corporal Lowry's family says that his death is still under investigation. They are choosing not to talk any more or share any more details until that investigation is complete. Sylvia, they do not know yet when his body will be returned to the United States. We're live in West Beverly. Jason Knowles, ABC 7 News. Now back to you. Okay.
An emotional tribute today for a fallen war hero. Strangers lined up the streets to pay respects as the hearse carrying the body of Marine Corporal Connor Lowry passed by. Lowry was killed in Afghanistan last week. Good afternoon, I'm Alan Kroszewski. And I'm Sylvia Perez. Linda Yu has the day off. A visitation service for Lowry is underway right now. And ABC 7's Evelyn Holmes is at St. John Fisher Church and joining us live with more on this. Evelyn? Well, Sylvia and Allen, that visitation is underway, and the remembrances from this afternoon for the uh, fallen Marine whose family says that he was looking forward to not only finishing his tour of duty, but certainly coming home and then starting a career as a Chicago firefighter. This morning, a native son came home. It's an absolute loss, and I really wish things like this didn't happen. It was an emotional reception as the heartbroken welcomed fallen Marine Corporal Connor Lowry. A jet carrying Lowry's body landed at Midway Airport Friday morning. Taps was played as the procession, escorted by the Illinois Patriot Guard and others, traveled through his southwest side neighborhood, then briefly paused at Lowry's alma mater, Brother Rice. He graduated in 2006 and joined the service two years later. The Marine's mother and sister shared an embrace with a teacher and a school official before returning to their car. It still hasn't hit completely, but... I can tell you it's going to be rough later. The Chicago Police Marine Corps League also donated $25,000 to Brother Rice to set up a scholarship in Lowry's name. Corporal Lowry is one of our own, and we just want to come out here and pay our respects to him. The Department of Defense is still investigating the death of the 24-year-old Beverly resident who was killed in Afghanistan March 1st. He was set to be discharged in July. He was serving as a Humvee gunner during combat operations in the same unit as Jennifer Granados' husband, Sergeant Eric Granados. She flew in from Houston to support the family. It means a lot to us. Uh, it's not easy. Um, every, every Marine's brother's family. The military honored motorcade ultimately made its way to St. John Fisher School and Church, where visitation began this afternoon for a man being remembered as someone everyone looked up to. He was just a beautiful guy. Just, just a great guy. set to happen here at this particular church uh, tomorrow morning at 10. Also to honor uh, Corporal Lowry, his mother will cut the ribbon to uh, step off this year's Southside Irish St. Patrick's Day Parade, which will take place on Sunday. Many of his friends will also march with the Grand Marshal. They say their intent is to keep his spirit alive. Reporting live from Chicago's Polar Southside, Evelyn Holmes, ABC 7 News. Alan, back to you. All right, Evelyn. Friends, family, and a community gather to say goodbye to a Chicago Marine. Corporal Connor Lowry was killed in Afghanistan last week. Good evening, everyone. Today's funeral mass was at the Southside Parish Church that Lowry grew up in. ABC 7's Evelyn Holmes is here now with more on what's been an emotional couple of days. Well, Evelyn. Karen and Ravi, it certainly has really been very emotional, not only for the family of Connor Lowry, but also the community. Marine Corps officials say his death is still under investigation. Connor Lowry's death comes during his second tour of duty in Afghanistan in October. He was uh, scheduled to return home in just three months. That's when he wanted to begin a career as a Chicago firefighter. The grief-stricken gathered to say a final goodbye to their native son, Marine Corporal Connor Lowry. He's a great human being. Uh, the whole community loved him um, more than anyone knows, really. This morning, the streets of the Beverly community were lined with friends, neighbors, as well as strangers, as more than 1,500 mourners, including Governor Pat Quinn, packed St. John Fisher Church for the fallen Marines' funeral mass, which was presided over by Connor's uncle, who flew in from Washington, D.C., for the service. I'm filled with sorrow, certainly, but uh, gratitude that in, in those 24 years, he packed in a lot of life. Lowry died March 1st. The Department of Defense says the Marine perished while conducting combat operations in Afghanistan's Helmut province. But today, how Connor Lowry lived was celebrated by those who knew him best. His sister Grace told those in attendance her brother was committed to serving others. Connor, I love you so much. You mean the world to me. You have always been my role model and my hero. Inside the church, Lowry's flag-draped casket remained at the front of the sanctuary as the many accomplishments he made during his short life were remembered. Lowry made an impression with his smile and personality no matter where he went. So today, as Connor Lowry was laid to rest, a family and a community vowed never to forget the man everyone always looked up to. 
We will miss you greatly. You will be in our hearts forever. Connor Lowry loved sports and played football at Brother Rice. He attended college but left in 2008 to join the Marines where he was an ammunition technician. Tomorrow there will be more honors for the fallen Marine. Connor's mother will cut the ribbon at, at the step off of the Southside Irish St. Patrick's Day Parade. Connor's friends will also march with the Grand Marshal. They say they're going to be representing him, keeping his spirit alive and mm. honoring him as well because he said they said he would have loved that parade. Mm. Right. Honoring his sacrifice. Yes, no okay. doubt. Okay. Evelyn, thank you. All right, we've been following that uh, procession all morning today in Chicago. He is remembering a Marine who lost his life in Afghanistan. Patrick Elwood on the scene for us on the southwest side. Patrick, pick up the story for us. What's going on right now? All right, guys, the uh, funeral procession just passed by uh, only moments ago, followed by the Patriot Guard. It was the guys who ride the Harleys, et cetera, former uh, vets themselves, escorting the body of uh, Connor Lowry, 2006 graduate of Brother Rice, right in front of the school, as you can see. Law enforcement well represented here as well. Oh, the kids at Brother Rice holding flags. These people over here, these are just folks who live in the neighborhood. I got to take you back just maybe a minute or two ago when the hearse rolled off. Up, and the, a senior uh, student here at Brother Rice played taps. And I got to give this kid credit because he did such a wonderful job, senior James Hobbison. So let's hear taps, and at the uh, director's discretion, let's hear from the school's principal about the kind of kid, the kind of man that Connor Lowry was. Connor, um, uh, as I like to say, was a, a spirited lad, um, but he was full of life, uh, full of enthusiasm, and um, he was a very, very nice young man, uh, just a great kid who loved life. He made friends. He was fun, and uh, I got to know him a little better because he and I were on our Kairos retreat together. Uh, going back a lot of years and uh, like a lot of kids uh, he had his his struggles in terms of what to do next and so forth but um, once he came back from the retreat and um, we developed I like to think a, a pretty good relationship and we talked fairly often about a number of things and one of which was uh, his uh, thoughts about the military even back then School principal uh, Jim Antos, his thoughts on Connor Lowry, uh, now deceased. He uh, died on March 1st, serving in action in Afghanistan. Along the parade, uh, procession route here, I'm talk to this gentleman. What's your name, sir? John Zawaski. John, what are your thoughts on what's happening here? Uh, we're honoring a hero. Pretty emotional stuff, huh? It sure is. Yeah, you're choked up. I'll leave you alone. So we got to go right now. They're going to go down 99th Street past Macaulay. Same scene there. Southwest Elementary, same scene there. And then he'll be waked at St. John Fisher where he went to grammar school today. I'll throw it back to you guys with this final thought. On Sunday at the Southside Irish Parade, his mother uh, will cut the uh, ceremony to, to kick off the parade, and his friends will join as uh, kind of ostensibly co honorees remembering the life and times of this fine young man. Mm. Reporting live from the South Side, 99th of Pulaski, throw it back to you guys in the studio. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Thanks, Patrick. Yeah. It's nice to see uh, so many yeah, people turn it. out for his yeah. family out there. Yeah, it's great stuff. Here he is, uh, reading an article in the South Town Star, talking about uh, the kind of kid he was. He's like a lot of kids that grew up in that area. Just a huge Notre Dame sports fan. He said he loved the Bulls, and he uh, he just collected all kinds of shirts and caps and you know everything that uh, the Bulls and Michael Jordan used to used to wear, and just uh, admired all the Chicago sports teams like uh, a lot of kids his age would have. So moving just to see him return like that, and, yeah. and, and his family has got to at least get some solid. Right. And seeing so many people return to the neighborhood and uh, honor this fallen hero, as right. we heard him describe. Southside Marine Corporal Connor Lowry has been laid to rest after dying in Afghanistan. Now, it will be weeks before the military provides official details of how he was killed. But in tonight's intelligence report, the story behind Lowry's death points to a battlefield accident. Our investigative reporter Chuck Addy joining us tonight with more. Chuck. 
Kathy Allen, until they learned of his death while on patrol, Connor Lowry's family didn't know that he was working as what is called a gunner, who operates an automatic weapon from a turret atop an armored Humvee. Gunners are more exposed to small arms and roadside bombs because of where they sit. And because Connor Lowry was six feet five inches tall, while assigned as a gunner, he was also at risk for something else. As Humvees have become better armored to protect drivers and passengers from improvised explosives, the gunner's position is still vulnerable. That was where 24-year-old Corporal Connor Lowry was positioned on March 1st, when his unit was on patrol here in Afghanistan's Helmand province. For gunners here in Afghanistan, just as American forces faced in Iraq, low-hanging power lines, fallen electric cables, and exposed steel rods or rebar from blown-up buildings pose a major risk. Since 2002, dozens of U.S. gunners have been electrocuted or injured after being snagged by live electric lines. In the case of Connor Lowry tonight, that is what Defense Department investigators are focusing on in his death. While Lowry was killed conducting combat operations, it is believed he died possibly by electrocution in a battlefield accident. In Iraq and Afghanistan, one-fifth of all U.S. military fatalities have been accidental or non-combat. For gunners, the constant threat from power lines is not new. This article in the military Stars and Stripes is from 2004 and quotes a gunner as saying that if you are not careful, low-hanging wires will either pull you out of your Humvee or decapitate you. Part of the problem is local residents who lose power then tap into the electric mains and string low-hanging live wires to their homes. Over the weekend, even as Lowry was laid to rest, his family and friends awaited official answers as to how he died, hailing him as a hero just the same, while hoping for some explanation as to his final moments. Three years ago, the Army began installing plastic piping around Humvee turrets to prevent gunners from being electrocuted by low-hanging power lines. It is not clear whether Marine vehicles were also retrofitted that way, nor is it known what kind of protection Corporal Lowry's Humvee had, or if it had any. Regardless of how this came down, and we won't know for months, it certainly is a tragedy.